What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Pick Six Podcast, CBS Sports Daily NFL Podcast video version. It's a pick show. Um, make sure you check it out on youtube.com slash CBS Sports. I'm Will Brinson. I'm your host. We do this eight shows a week, maybe going down to like five, I guess, uh, because with the playoffs and the end of the season coming. Uh, because, uh, you know, because our bosses like content and hate me, uh, we're going to be doing um, a show on Saturdays after the Saturday games and the playoff games. Yeah, should be fun. Uh, make sure and check out in the feed our Thursday night recap show of the Ravens Jets game uh, with the Super Friends. And we're going to be doing for Christmas a giant mailbag. We're going to answer any question you may have about anybody involved in the podcast. Go to Apple Podcast, write a five star review, leave it. We need as many questions as possible for the Christmas mailbag. Like I'm freezing on the YouTube. That's okay. Pete Prisco, RJ White, joining me now for the Picks Show. The what is your shirt? What is your shirt, by the way, today? Uh, it's Max Scherzer. What? Two weird eyes. Why awesome. would you have that shirt on? You're not a, a Nats fan. I am so a Nats fan. Band it's a bandwagon fan. fan. Oh, he jumped on, did he? Typical uh, I was on. I was on the bandwagon before the Nats won the World Series. I had the Nats over win total last year. Um, I've been going to Nats games for years because my buddy Zeke is a big Nats fan. You're a Braves and, fan. Yeah, but I was rooting for the Nats last year. It's a weird thing. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? You, what? Who'd you grow up rooting for? The Buffalo Bills, right? Well, and the Braves. Okay, so if, if the Buffalo Bills get eliminated, then you can pick any team you want to and just root for them all the way through the playoffs because that's how it works. Apparently. Nowadays. Yeah. I would never wear it. I know team. the Braves. The Braves won the division. I was still rooting for the Nats. It was very weird. It's a very bizarre headspace to be in. Uh, <laughs> it's really weird. I know. I don't. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Fell in love with that Nats team. Um, what can I tell you? I love teams. Not you know. Anyway, uh, RJ coming to us <laughs> via sports line. I don't know what to tell you. I love the Nats. There's nothing you can tell us. It's just the weirdest thing in the world. You can't be I a don't... fan of both teams. You just can't be. I don't disagree. It's hard to explain. It's impossible to explain. Um, but I was rooting for the 2019 Nats. They were lovable. They were down. They were 17 and 31 or so, whatever it was on like May 31st. They were done. They were trying to fire their manager. And they just had this energy about them, a positive vibe, a collective energy that drove them to greater heights. Like the opposite hey, of this podcast. Hey, Twitter. Hey, Twitter. Is Brinson off a little bit when he's rooting for a team in the same league that uh, when Division. he grew up a Braves fan? <laughs> In fact, He's the off. Is, the worst part is the Braves had their like resurgence and their renaissance the last two years. It's been very weird. I uh, I grew up a New York Giants fan. That would be like me cheering for the Eagles when I was a kid. After the Giants didn't do anything, well, the Eagles never did anything back then either. But come on, Princeton, something's wrong. I with will you. I will say that Soft. I find my yeah, but like, do you? I mean, you're not a Giants fan anymore because you've been doing this long enough. Like, I don't find myself being as big a Braves fan as I used to be. You know what? That's the equivalent of. It's when those SEC teams stink, but they still chant SEC, SEC. Your team stinks. Why are you rooting for the other teams in your conference? <laughs> I, like, I don't root for the Pac-12 if the ASU stinks. I don't. Well, yeah, then you'd just be rooting for the Pac-12 all the time. Right. Because ASU always wow. stinks. Or, wow. or, or the ACC like NC State fans do. I'm a Clemson fan for different reasons. <laughs> See, there he goes. There he goes. Uh, go to sportsline.com slash join. Enter promo code WHITE. Get your first month for a dollar. RJ White heating up as we get closer to the playoffs. Every All the picks against the spread. I think you're heating up, aren't you? Um, Pete Prisco, you can read him on CBS Sports. Watch him on CBS Sports HQ. Follow him on Twitter at Prisco CBS. RJ's at RJ White 1. Let's look at the standings from last week. And uh, we'll talk about them. Were we terrible last week? We... Eh. RJ above 500 last week. 3-2. and two. I was 2-3. 49-36. and 36. I think technically I was two, two, and one because I didn't want the Browns after the Baker injury, but w whatever. You know, that's two weeks in a row. I've got he an L. Wants from... to, he always wants to change after we record. I mean, yeah, I'd like to change something after we record too, but that means we're doing a disservice to the people who sit here and listen to us. And well, watch you're us. three and four. You got to get to five hundred. Uh, I'm at fifty-eight percent for the year. RJ at fifty-one percent. Pete at forty-five percent. Going to stay hot this week. I, this is an interesting week. Let's die, let's go ahead and get into it. Um, oh yeah, by the way, the parlay lo lost again. What do you what do you know? Uh, Oakland, told you we go one out of three. Yeah, we're back uh, to uh, we're back to reality again on that thing. I know we got to get a parlay going here, guys. Um, 
Oakland, and Ten- against- Oakland and Tennessee. Boy, they're at 21 21 at the half. We look good. Then they didn't show up yes. in the second half. Yeah. And the Jets should have easily covered against Miami. They went, um, they were horrific in the red zone. I cannot believe that over didn't hit. That is the most frustrating thing of my last month. Um, and I've got a five year old in case you didn't hear. Uh, the picks on deck. Let's get to them. The Rams at the Cowboys. The Rams are minus one at the Dallas Cowboys. Going into week 14, Pete Prisco, this was Cowboys minus four. The Cowboys got embarrassed by the Bears on national television, and the Rams embarrassed the Seahawks on national television. So the Lions won five points. A five points. The over-under is 49. This is not a make-or-break game for the Cowboys because they have the Eagles next week. It is a make-or-break game for the Rams. Do you think they make it or do you think they break it? Uh, I think they make it. Uh, I, I think this is a tale of what happens when you have a good coach on one team and a bad coach on the other. The other one was spiraling a little bit, and they regrouped because the coach is a good coach. The other team thought they were playing well, and they started spiraling, and they don't know how to get out from underneath it because they have a bad coach, and, and that's going to show up here. Plus, the game doesn't mean anything to the Cowboys. Cowboys lose this game, beat the Eagles next week, and then win in the final week of the season. They're division champs. The Rams have to have it. They're long. I mean, they're not really a long shot. If they win out and the Vikings lose, they have a real chance to get in the postseason. So uh, I think the Rams will go in there. Jared Goff's playing well. I think they win the game. Or if you're the Cowboys, you win this week. You win next week. You get to take the next week off because it doesn't mean anything. So if you're the players, that's some incentive to play hard this week because then you get a week off down the road. You know, so it's a very public pick to go with the Rams. 88% of the tickets on the Rams. The lines move five points like Brinson. Yeah, I think that's the movement's uh, uh, outrageous. I don't think there's any way you could take the Rams in this game. I think if you're going to play it, you got to play the Cowboys just because of that line move and there's value on the Cowboys. It's hard to take them with how they've looked, though. Obviously, Cowboys have been terrible. Rams defense has been elite versus everyone but Baltimore. Seven of their last eight games have gone under. So I think the better play here is the under. Under 49. 49 is a high total for a, for a team that is playing a lot of unders like the Rams are. I think Dallas's defensive issues could screw up hitting the under, but the Ramsey is going to have to fall apart for this to lose because they're not going to give up that many points against the Cowboys. So close game, little lower scoring game. I would take the under if I'm taking anything, but just to lean. I am. Look, this game is very confusing and frankly kind of per- perplexing because it seems very, very obvious that the Rams should be the play here. I mean, they are great against bad defenses and the Cowboys aren't a great defense. Um, there is a major coaching mismatch, as Pete pointed out. Uh, there is, you know, a, a, a greater sense of urgency for the Rams. They have gotten, they've changed up what they do. They're using more inline blocking tight ends. They're incorporating Tyler Higby. You know, Brandon Cooks has basically been phased out of the offense. I think he played like 28% of the snaps last week. Unstart, he's droppable in fantasy at this point. He'll probably go off against the Cowboys. Watch, watch my luck. Robert Woods has been a big focal point. I think he could op- open some up for Cooper Cup. They're using Josh Reynolds more. He's a better blocker than Cooks. And so it feels like they're really focusing on the run game. Todd Gurley running well. I just thought something stinks about this. I mean, everybody is taking the Rams because it's obvious that the Rams should roll. That's literally my only logic for taking the Cowboys is that this line stinks. What is that stupid? Uh, no. Take, do what you want. Well, how, how bad was the look ahead line then? Like you said, if you move five points and if you still want to take the Rams, how's their value on the Rams at this point if it's moved five points already? Like, I don't think there's no can... value. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. There's no value in the Rams. So that's the that's the argument for taking the Cowboys, right? The Cowboys should be if the Cowboys were yeah, minus. But the look ahead line also has to take into account how the teams play, and they're and the Cowboys. They were playing, playing bad coming out of yeah, the, their the previous Cowboys are game. playing awful well, <laughs> and the Rams got beat actually, up by the Bills. The Rams actually looked good last week against Seattle. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, yes, granted, yeah, they look good. Yeah, I yeah, mean, they look good. I, I just don't think the Cowboys are very good right now. I think the coach is bad, and I think that shows up every week. Is, is this a sometimes a line is just a line situation? Like it's just. The Rams are just no, better. because I think the public has moved the line. I think you guys are right. I think the public is on the Rams, but maybe they're on the Rams because they're the right team. Public loves the Rams, but it's not the public that moves the lines t- typically. It's a lot of money. So all this money came in on the Rams to move it from plus three to minus one. But at this point, I mean, it's, the money's got to get dried up because people are only getting their money in with the good numbers. So I, I think the Rams are the better team. I think they'll win the game outright. Lay the point. I, I think it should happen. There's just something stinky about this game, and I can't get there. By the way, the Rams are now one and a half. Um, so I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe the Rams are just the better team and they're going to roll the Cowboys in, in Dallas. And, Dallas a one and, a half. and a lot of people will look at what the bills did when they went in on Thanksgiving. Are the Rams a better team than the bills? Probably not. 
You can make an argument. Yeah. Um, when, at one and a half, there's a good argument to be made about teasing it up, taking the Dallas, getting the six points, teasing it up to seven, seven and a half. And a half. That would because be if the line was minus four on the look ahead, is the was the look ahead line really 11 and a half points off? Yeah, I, I think, value? I mean, that would make a lot of sense. You take seven and a half in the mm-hmm. Cowboys. I just think, like, I, I mean, I'm trying to walk myself, and I don't want to linger too long in this game, but I do think it's a, it's a huge game for the, you know, for the Rams, obviously, and a big game for the Cowboys, too. I think it's being undersold there. Like, I, I'm trying to walk myself through the scenario where the Rams are just blown out by the Cowboys, and I can't I can't really find it. Uh, kicking game's improved for the Cowboys, so at least that's something. Okay. Uh, they go. have that going for them. <laughs> Kai Forbath is the answer as to how this happens. And, so, and, people, and I've, seen, I've seen people make this argument, too. Now that they know that they can't rely on the 60-yard Brett Meyer field goal, they have a guy with a shorter leg, maybe they start getting a little more aggressive when you, once you get into yeah. the, the middle areas, the 30- to 40-yard line kind of thing. You know? I don't like that. So, who knows? I, I, I look, I'm, I'm probably going to go with the Cowboys in my picks pools as like a way to sort of differentiate and try and climb the last little ladder to the top if I can make it. But I don't feel good about it. I think the Rams are the pick, and I'm probably going to hate myself on Sunday. Bill, <clears throat> excuse me, Bills at Steelers flexed into Sunday night football. The Buffalo Bills, your Buffalo Bills, RJ. You love to see it. Night. You, you do love to excited about that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Against, actually, it's really Pete's Buffalo Bills these days. They um, are my Buffalo Bills. Yeah. Bills I'm, a big, I, I'm a big believer in Sean McDermott. I really am. I think, he, I think he's, a, he's done a great job with this team. The defensive game plan last week was outstanding against Lamar Jackson. They did a great job. They had the one bust. Other than that, they did a fantastic job on him. They kept him in line. Duck Hodges isn't scaring anybody. I, I know the Steelers have done a good job offensively to scheme things around, but I think the Bills' defense will show up here. I didn't like what I saw from the Bills' offense last week. They had no answer for the blitz. They got attacked every which way imaginable from the blitz, and they didn't handle it very well. The offensive line didn't handle it very well. Allen didn't handle it very well. The receivers dropped balls. But I think they're going to handle the Steelers here. It's not going to be a high-scoring game. I think it's going to be a very low-scoring game. But I think the Bills are going to do what they did to Dallas and go in and win a tough, hard physical game. And to your point, Brinson didn't get to read the line. Steelers minus 2.5. Over under 36.5. So we are predict, predict, projecting a very low-scoring game. Once you get a total of that low, my lean would be to the over just because only one crazy thing has to happen for that game to go over. But I'm with you. I would lean to the Bills plus 2.5. Pittsburgh didn't look like they trust Duck to go deep. I mean, no. the way you beat Arizona is throwing it all over them because they have a terrible secondary. They wouldn't throw the ball deep. So what does that tell you about Duck Hodges? It tells you that they don't have their very much faith in him to throw the ball and execute a and downfield offense. He throws a touchdown pass or instead of an interception late that's mm-hmm. a ball game right there so if you're limiting your offense you know from the get-go with duck you know you're going to have trouble against a really good defense like buffalo because they're going to sniff that out and they're going to shut you down then what do you do um the pittsburgh d thrives on getting turnovers bills have only coughed it up three times in their last eight games they've gotten a lot better protecting the ball so it looks like juju may miss another game now that would make it a stronger you know lean for me and i might actually make it a best bet if i thought juju would miss the game because he left practice early on thursday um so if he is ruled out, make it a best bet, you know, put him bills plus two and a half, definitely take them. Um, but otherwise, I don't know why Steelers are going to be favored in this game because that offense just hasn't looked right. Really? I, I, I'm surprised that you guys, I, I just think it's going to be a low. Sc- Mike Tom has got a really good record in prime time against the spread, has a really good record at home, has done a hell. I mean, like, it feels like we're selling the Steelers and their coaching job and their defense a little short here. Am I, I mean, am I, am I crazy? I, I took Mike Tom has done a great job with this team. There's no denying that. This is one of his it's, best. This is when he's at his best, I think. How are it's the, a good team. We're not saying that they're going to lose to, like, the Giants or anything. I no, mean, the Bills are a great team, too. Yeah. It's a tough matchup, low scoring game. But you like the Take under. The you like the under. No, I would lean to the over. You would? Just I wouldn't. I mean, I don't think there's going to be a lot of scoring scoring in this game, but 36 and a half is just so, such low of a total. They just take the over. So we got we got nothing for the parlay then so far. Because Princeton sounds oh, like you like you like the Steelers. I like the Steelers in the under. So we he, got you know why he likes part. the Steelers, don't you? <laughs> why? Holding on to your Super Bowl pick. They're not making the Super Bowl with Duck Hodges. <laughs> if they do, I'll get a Duck Hodges henna tattoo on my on my forehead. Oh no! Don't Anna, say that. Anna. Don't Anna. don't say that, please. If uh, you know what, if, if if they make the Super Bowl, I'll, I'll buy everybody a Duck Hodges tee from Breaking Tea. Have you seen these? Like a like a duck head. It's like the remember that old remember that old movie that weird old movie was it uh, was it Mr. Duck or whatever? What was it? Happy Howard the Duck. Day? Howard the Duck. Yes, Mr. Duck. What am I talking about? Um, Mr. Duck. How could you get you to Mr. Duck? I don't know. You guys got me worried about these picks out of the gate. Ah, oh, golly. I don't like either of those games. They're very tough to pick. I took the under. In the, I, I do like the under in this one, but no best bet for me. Falcons at 49ers. Min, 49ers minus 10 and a half. The 49ers return from quite the sojourn, playing the, uh, first the Ravens in Baltimore, then the Saints 
in New Orleans going one and one. A very impressive road trip for them. The over under here is 47 and a half. Pete, you like the Falcons, huh? I think 10 and a half is too many. Uh, I, I, I think there's a natural letdown. When you go play the Ravens, you go play the Saints, and, and now you're back home playing a team that you should beat handily, uh, one that can score um, if they protect, and I think getting the, their line better uh, will help him again, and I think they're going to be able to make some plays here. Uh, Carolina was terrible last week on defense, so it's hard to put that game into perspective. But the 49ers' defense wasn't great last week. No Sherman. That's going to be a problem. Um, and I think that Matt Ryan's going to be able to keep up. I, I don't think the Falcons are going to slow down the Niners that much. I think they'll run the ball on them. But I think this game will be tighter than the 10 and a half. I'll take the 10 and a half. I don't mind that play. If I was going to lean, i lean to the 49ers, um, though. Um, I like fading the Falcons coming off a blowout win, hitting the road to face an elite team here. Atlanta leads league in pass attempts and a pass off happy offense. San Fran is... D is first in net yards per pass attempt, so they know how to limit the defense. And yes, Sherman is out. That is that does uh, come into play, but Ridley's out on the other side too. So you're taking one weapon away from Atlanta. You're taking one coverage guy away from San Francisco. Uh, Jimmy G had the offense rolling last week. I think he'll shine against the 26th ranked Atlanta pass defense. San Fran d- is dealing with injuries, but Atlanta, like I said, just lost that key piece too. Um, I just think I like fading the Falcons coming off their blowout win. I think we might get a tiny bit of value 49ers, but I'm probably staying away from this because it has a lot of points. Yeah, I would give Falcons uh, with the points here. I think this is just too many. The, the one, the one thing that worries me a little bit is that the uh, Falcons against teams with elite pass rushes have uh, have struggled, and so that could be problematic. However, I I just think there's going to be this like sigh of relief for for the 49ers, and not that they're going to look ahead, but they do have two key divisional games against the uh, the Rams and the Seahawks after. The, the, the Falcons this week. Those are the games that are going to determine who ends up winning the division. And probably if the, you know, the Falcons, if the, excuse me, if the 49ers can get the first overall seed. I, I think there's just going to be a sense of, whew, man, we made it back from those two games. Those really difficult games sort of let your guard down. I wouldn't expect that Richard Sherman or any of the guys who are a little banged up are actually going to be out there. You can't afford to put Richard Sherman out there and have him like tear a hamstring because he's you know banged up or questionable. That'd be insane. You've got to save him for these divisional games. Got to save him for the playoffs. You know, you're making both or you feel like you're making both. And so I just, I just think there's an opportunity here for the Falcons to sort of like maybe squeak out something like a, a little, not a false hope run, but like it'll, I think it'll look like those two Cardinals games where the Cardinals kept it close enough within the 10 point so um backdoor cover maybe for atlanta with a mobile quarterback matt ryan right well, he's not yeah. quite that mobile <laughs> uh he took a beating for comparing it to the arizona yeah. games yeah it's a different well animal. i mean it's not like lamar jackson ran all over san francisco did he but <laughs> an immobile quarterback had a good game against them last week it's gonna be better weather in this game than there was in that lamar jackson game i, I don't know i don't know if i buy the mobile quarterback thing with the i don't think it's like with the Salah's defense i don't think i just think that's a coincidence well, I mean, Drew Brees is immobile, and he torched them last week. Right. Like, I, I don't think it's a... Yeah, but they had mobile. Taysom Hill in a few plays. I know you love those Taysom Hill yeah, plays, Pete. <laughs> We're taking the ball out of Drew Brees' hands. <laughs> Please, can you stop that, Sean? I mean, Drew Brees, better. what did he I throw, was... five touchdown passes last week, and he took the ball and out of his hands? he ran another one? And he took the ball out of his hand. It's so dumb. Um. Oh, this is a, this is a good game right here. Ooh. Jack- Super Bowl what preview. I'm just kidding. I, I messed up. I looked ahead one game. I was looking ahead. Say, I got sandwiched, Pete. Vikings minus, this is actually a good game. Vikings minus two and a half at Chargers. Over under 45. You guys have a consensus over there with the uh, Chargers getting two and a half at home. I think they're going to win the game outright. I, I think the Chargers defensive line will play well in this game and get after Cousins. Uh, and I think Phillip Rivers played well and will get the ball out of his hands. That that Minnesota defense is not playing well, and particularly in the secondary. I think there's going to be opportunities to throw the football. I think Eckler, what you saw him last week against uh, a dead Jacksonville team, but that's a whole other story, and we'll get to that in a second. But uh, I think Rivers is going to play well here, and I think that they win this game outright. If you're going to give me points, um, yeah, I, l- there will be a lot of Vikings fans in the stands. We know that. Uh, but I still think that the, the Chargers are the play here. I'm on the Chargers, too, because I don't think there's that big a gap between these two teams right now. Minnesota seems like they're rolling. They've covered just two of their last six games, so it's not like they're they're blowing teams out. It just kind of feels that way. Cause, you know about last week's game. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Up 20 nothing, destroyed them, and, of course, that, that was a push. Hey, Pete, um, Pete, how about that game, by the way, really quickly? I literally said that exact thing would happen on the halftime show, didn't I? Yes. I said they would completely shut down. There would be some sort of backdoor Kenny Galladay. Yeah, you chunky. did. You I did. Called, like, I called it verbatim. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you I, did. Yeah, sorry. You also said Kirk Cousins was better than Aaron Rodgers, but we won't get into that. 
Sean ranked him ahead of him. Uh, <laughs> Throw Sean under the bus. Uh, Vikings struggle on the road. I know this is a, a de facto home game with the fans, but you still got to travel. So, I mean, there's some to that. Three and four straight up and against spread at the road. And we'll talk about look-ahead spots. They get Green Bay next week on, Mon- on Monday night. So, can't get much bigger than that. They could be playing for the division. They got to be thinking. So, um, uh, I don't think that we get their best here. Chargers have been dominant statistically for weeks, but they find ways to lose. I mean, so, since the start of November, they've outgained Green Bay and Kansas City at home and Denver and Jacksonville on the road by 100-plus yards. They're just steamrolling up and down the field on these teams and then doing stupid stuff and missing kicks or getting kicks blocked or doing all these dumb things. Um, but I think to get that, getting that a little bit together, the D is healthier. Derwin James back. They looked really good last week. Rivers can exploit a Minnesota defense that has not looked as good passing the ball. Um, so I agree with you there. A lot of weapons. Mike Williams finally got on the scoreboard got a touchdown um so and you know throw it to echo on the screen pass so yeah i do think the chargers are going to win this game as well people i said this the other day and and guys laughed at me the afc is probably happy the chargers aren't in the playoffs Mm -hmm. because like you mentioned all those yardage numbers and everything they're a better team than their record If they got into the playoffs they would be a dangerous team and and they would they would be a a scary team for teams if they got in with derwin james being back if the alternative is kansas city too i'm sure they don't want to face patrick Mahomes. no no but maybe as a wild card if they were good enough to be a wild card if they if they got in over like the steelers i don't think anybody's scared of the steelers with that offense okay so look i don't like to do this typically but uh i think i'm gonna reverse course from the pick i made on the site i'm gonna flip it and uh, having dug in while you guys were talking about the Chargers a little bit, I took the Vikings initially. Because my theory was when I made the picks on Tuesday night, my pick, my theory was everyone is going to see that the Chargers played really well against the, the Jaguars on the road, and they're going to back the Chargers. And they're like, eh, whatever, the Vikings. As it turns out, 75% of the bets are on the Vikings as a two-and-a-half-point road favorite. Slight differential towards the Chargers in terms of the money. Um and I agree. The one spot where you can get after Kirk Cousins is, is if you can rush the passer. And with Derwin James, they should be able to play the run a little bit better. Maybe a little FSU juice, Derwin versus Dalvin Cook. Uh, so unless you guys completely object, I am going to flip my pick and go to the Chargers here, and we can make it the first leg of the parlay. Let's no, do it. That's fun. Let's do it. You can flip your pick now. You just can't flip it after the fact like you've been doing in the last two no, weeks. No, no, it's not, it's not going to be a best bet or anything <laughs> like that. I'm just saying, like, I think the more I look at it, initially yeah. when I dove into it, the more I thought I thought everybody was going to be on L.A. as like a trendy home dog because they just whipped up on the Jaguars. No, you That's can do it. Game. Let's make it. Everybody let's make it the first pick of the first pick of the parlay. All right, I'm flipping my pick in my picks pool there. Um, I'll send an email to R.J. and let him know, or Kevin or Brett. Uh, that's the first pick in the parlay chargers. Okay. I like it. I I was sort of in my own head on that one, that game a little bit. Now I got to go back and go to the Rams game too. Jaguars at the Raiders. I got two best bets in this game. Ooh. Raiders are minus six and a half and the over under is 45 and a half. This is Pete by in all likelihood. And with all probability, the final game. What do you mean? In all likelihood, it it will be, I mean, the stadium is not built. Like they don't have a home. Well, it's almost done. It's the last game. But go ahead. This is probably the last game in Oakland for the Raiders until they come back to Oakland in like 10 years. Or so, they, get, they make a playoff run, make a playoff push, get no. the five seed, five versus six, at AFC championship game in Oakland. Yeah, okay. The six seed Patriots against the five seed Raiders in Oakland. Go. be incredible. Well, well the, Raiders, the Raiders are going to look like a playoff team in this game because the Jacksonville Jaguars have packed their bags and got home. Uh, they've called every travel agent they could find to get the island cruises and the and the trips to the, to the Caribbean and everything else. They're done. They packed it in. The coaching staff has packed it in. Did you see Scott Milanovic, the offensive court, the quarterbacks coach, took a job in Canada this week because everybody knows they got to go look for jobs. It's over and done with. Uh, they're going to fire the whole thing. It's gone. They quit. The team stinks. They got five, uh, six undrafted. Think about this. Six undrafted guys starting on defense. The Raiders will run through them, around them, and do everything they want on offense. And then you'll see some points scored in the back door from Minshew. He'll do some some of his running around and make a few plays. It's going over as one of my best bets. And I love the Raiders in this game. I like your over. My best bet was the, also the Raiders' last home game in Oakland. You can't stress that enough. It, I don't know how you cap for that. You know, you might give them four extra points, three extra points. The the energy is going to be insane. Jags team has quit. I had them last week. I thought getting Minshew in, they play a little better. They they show up. They want to show that they have a spot on the team next year. Nobody cares. So it seems like they're all just gone home. Gruden's going to pull out all the stops. He loves the Oakland fans. He's made that clear. So you're going to get the whole kitchen sink. This is going to be Oakland Super Bowl in this game, and you're only laying less than 
and a touchdown, so I think that's great. Um, that said, Oakland has been blown out in three straight games. 31st ranked defense leaves the back door open, so I do worry that it's 13 and then a touchdown gets it to six. So um, I do like best bet. I think it's just going to be like they roll for 60 minutes. By the way, Jacksonville's traditionally had all kinds of problems on the West Coast. They haven't won there, I think, since way back when. And one year they went there, and the plumbing broke in the Coliseum, and they couldn't flush the toilets or take showers before they got on the plane to go home. But the only thing that stinks in that stadium right now is them. <laughs> That's what you call a metaphor, is when you clog up the toilets. They clog up a lot of toilets this Jaguars. year in Jacksonville. So here's my thing on this game, and I tend to agree with you. I'd like You look at it, and it is so obvious, all the things you guys just said. Why is the line six and a half? It's moving slowly because it opened at four, and it just it's gonna it keeps on going. Well, up. because Oakland's not like he just told you, Oakland hasn't exactly been beating the daylights out of anybody either. The, Jaguar, getting the daylights beaten out of them. Mm-hmm. The Jaguars have lost their last five games by an average of twenty. Twenty-six to three, thirty-three thirteen, forty-two twenty, twenty-eight eleven, forty-five to ten. By an average There's of twenty. There's something something stinky and fishy about this game. Uh, I, don't see, that. Like I don't see it. I don't see it at all because I think when you look at Oakland's last three games, what have they been right. beating? They got blown out. I, I don't know the exact score. Yeah, they've blown been blown out. out. Read their last three scores, Will. Since the Raiders' you're... last three scores, they're not pretty either. 34-3 to three at the Jets, 40-9 to nine at the Chiefs, and 42-21 at home against the Titans. Right, so their scores aren't that much better, and they're laying six and a half to an even worse team. And Look, and I think I think you're right about the Gruden showing off for the Raiders. It's going to be a raucous place. It's more so than ever. But why didn't they didn't show up for the Titans either? It was 21-21 <laughs> at the half. Also, the Titans are good. Yeah, right. The Jaguars are terrible. Big, big difference. And my power ratings right now, I have the Jaguars as the last team. I, I They're would, playing worse than any team them, in the league. If you put them on a neutral, I would take any team in the league over them. I'd yeah. take the Giants. The I Bengals. Take, yeah, any of them. They're the worst They're team the in the league right now. Right. They're playing worse than anybody in the league right now. If you tell anybody there who's like, we're out of here, this is like, this is checked. They're all checked out. I mean, they're done. They don't have any talent. They got six undrafted guys starting on defense. It's terrible. I honestly don't know how he hasn't been fired yet. I mean, you got to know what's coming. Like, why not just throw an interim coach in there for a few games? Players, obviously, have, it doesn't matter. I mean, they're going to, if, if Filippo stinks, Todd Wash the problem, you can't really do it. No, nobody, you know, nobody's playing for Marone, so why not just yeah. put, the, put the special teams coach? I don't care who it is. Just Camillus. Like, throw yeah. someone in there. So I'm going to take the, 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 the Jaguars. Good, you got him. It's not my best. Do you like? Or do you like the over? Because he liked the over too. Do you like the over? Sure. I mean, I, let's throw it in. Throw it in. Throw it in. Throw it in. Over in Raiders Jaguars is part of the parlay. All right, Pete's making notes there. I love it. Dolphins at Giants. Giants again. The, there's something stinky out here on these lines. The Giants are three and a half point favorites against anybody. Come on, Eli Manning probably starting maybe his final home game at. Maybe we'll get one more. We'll see. Giants minus three and a half. Over under is 46 and a half. Another game you like in a shootout, Pete. I'm going to go ahead and warn you before you make it a best bet. 17 mile an hour wins forecasted for Sunday in New York. Yeah, I don't care. The Dolphins defense is atrocious. I think Eli Manning will make some plays. I think they'll run the ball on him. I think Barkley had a couple big plays. And on the other side, the Giants defense isn't any good either. Um, if they ever learned how to... Uh, cover a tight end the only there's one guy you got to cover in overtime and he they let him do whatever the heck he wanted to they're terrible on defense i think this one goes up and down i'm going over and, and look the winds uh they'll probably won't be as bad and usually when you have a forecast like that it just kind of dies down a little bit i don't know how the giants are favored against anyone minus the jaguars at this point you know especially a more than a field goal like at that you get three and a half take the dolphins it doesn't nothing else really matters when you're when you're handicapping this game but miami is seven and two against the spread since Fitzpatrick came back into the lineup giants have lost nine straight again why are the giants favored if those are the trends you're looking at giants do have a good run d Miami doesn't run the ball, so it's not like that's going to help you out much. Patrick Laird. Uh, 32nd in rush attempts, Miami is. So so Fitzpatrick's just going to sling it around. I don't care what the win factor is. He's going to throw it. Uh, he'll throw it all over an awful Giants pass defense, even with the bad, the bad weather. The back door is wide open if we need it. Even if the Giants are up 8 or 9 or whatever, we can get a cover here. So uh, give me the Dolphins. Pretty easy. Best bet for me. I like the Giants. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I don't like any of them. I mean, like, I, I'm, I'm going to. I would take the Giants, too. It's not a best bet for me, but I would take this the Giants. This is the week I'm catching up to Brinson. Yeah. In one film. You might be. You <laughs> might be. The way he's going, the way his. Well, he's changed a couple already because of what we oh, said. Yeah. So I, All I did was change the Chargers. I was on the fence on that one anyway. 
But that wasn't is, one of your best bets, though. No, I'm just telling you, I just flipped the pick. Um, the uh, the thing with this game that I think could be interesting is that the Giants could actually, I think Eli Manning will be, in, I think he'll be legitimately inspired to play at home again in front of that crowd that loves Eli. I think that crowd will show up for Eli. And I think they'll be enthusiastic, even in this crap game, even in kind of cold weather. They know it's the last time they can see him play at home, potentially. Um, you're he giving good a lot of half. credit to Giants fans. I know some Giants, you know, I've heard, listen, have to listen to Giants fans a lot. They are not the most optimistic bunch that are going to And, rah, and you rah, might Eli. not exactly see about the half of them in that stadium on Sunday. I don't know what you're talking about. Right, Who's going to be there? Show up? I don't know. Look, They're not showing up. Either. Fine, that's fine. Maybe they don't show up. Eli is going to show up, in a, and he's going to show up, and he's going to throw a bunch of screens to Saquon Barkley, who's going to have a huge game because the Dolphins' run defense stinks, and they, they can't stop it if you throw to the, the running back. Um, Adam Gase is a that's terrible a run defense. <laughs> you hear what you just said? What I said? The Dolphins' run defense stinks, but you can't stop it if you throw it to the running back. Mm. That's, that's, that's pass defense. Yeah. Yeah, but you said run defense. I mean, the, the Dolphins' defense stinks. There How's you go. That? No, that's, okay, better. Yeah, yeah. that's better. That's better. They can't stop either one is what I'm saying. And I think that Saquon Barkley is going to get a lot of usage in this game. Sterling Shepard, a bunch of dump offs. I think, I just think I, I just got a feeling the Giants are going to blow out the Dolphins. I don't, I don't really know why, but that's how I feel it's going to go. Back to back um, road games for the Dolphins in the same stadium too. Yeah. That's a weird spot. Yeah. Those ones. Think, back they, to back. think they even take their uh, equipment home or do they just leave it in the lockers? Well, most of that stuff you need for the week though. Just be like, yeah, just leave it there. We'll, there. We use the backup stuff at home when we practice. <laughs> yeah, uh, I can't take the over because of the wind. I also think the wind is going to be a factor. If no, like once Devontae Parker went out for that Dolphins offense, they went off a cliff. They, I mean, they couldn't do anything in the red zone. I get it that the Giants' defense is bad, but I don't think Ryan Fitzpatrick's going to have a big game in the wind. I see the the Giants making some plays on defense. He's here. big on the wind this week, <laughs> Brinson. 17 miles an hour. It's a, over the magic number. So uh, I will pass on anything on that game as a best bet. Eagles. Jim, can, two- Jim Cantor Brinson this week. <laughs> we got a thunderstorm. Okay, like, oh, look, there's a hurricane. No kidding. Why are you standing on the beach still? <laughs> but the best is you see like the one where like he's like, we're being, I'm being, I'm out here. I'm telling you guys, this is an intense storm. And then like two people come jogging behind him. That was, that was the other guy though. That wasn't Cam Tour. That was the other guy. Mike Seidel, I think, or one of them. Yeah, it's a brutal storm. This guy goes trudging through getting getting lunch from a place down the block. (laughs) He's like in like a little, in his little jogging hats. Yeah. 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 He's like, I can't tell you guys how dangerous this is. He's just jogging along. Um, Eagles minus four and a half at the Redskins. The over under is 40 we're adding two more games to our rundown um because rj and i both agree with this don't we rj we do best bet redskins um washington's been keeping games close lately uh with a run heavy approach they covered their last three philly's just four and nine against the spread this year didn't cover any of their last four so you look at these trends you would think that the redskins should be uh you know at least three you know that you make that game at least three i don't know why you're gonna make the eagles a big road favorite in this game this sense philly's passing attack's been ravaged jeffrey's done Eagles struggle when Lane Johnson's out. He's going to miss this game. Um, I believe it's a high ankle sprain. And the under is 4-1 and one in the last five Eagles games, 2-8 and eight in the last 10 Washington games. So I would lean to the under 40 as well. Um, but best bet's definitely Redskins plus 4.5. They've been keeping games close. I like the under. I just can't take Dwayne Haskins. I just can't. Um, I know the Eagles have been a mess. I think defensively they've had problems. But they've had problems with teams sometimes, and even Manning early in that game. They could throw the ball down the field. Haskins can't throw it. I mean, he's holding it. I think the pass rush will get to him. My lean would be to the Eagles. I don't love it, but I like the under. I think that game's going under. Um, I would go Redskins here, and I, I don't mind the under at all because neither of these teams is very good. Haskins is like kind of played okay. Like I feel like you could kind of get behind Haskins as a as a future franchise quarterback. It's some to stuff be around. determined. You can't tell sure. by what he's done so far. He has no, no weapons. But like, but, like, if the Redskins have the number one overall pick, they're definitely taking Chase Young or Jace Burrow, right? Joe yes. Burrow. No, yeah. they're not going to take Burrow. Right. They wouldn't take Joe Burrow if they had the number one pick. They would either trade out or take well, Chase Well, also, Dan Snyder is the one who pushed the draft Dwayne Haskins in the first place. They're not sure. going to overrule that. That's not happening. Right. And all, all I'm saying is that I think you could see Dwayne Haskins have a decent little game against a horrific Eagles secondary. I think he'll push it to Terry McLaurin a couple of times. All you got to do is get vertical on them once or twice. Carson Wentz, no Lane Johnson, bad, not good. Passer rating drops off a cliff, as we know. We mentioned that. Played good in the second half without Lane Johnson the other day. Who were they playing? Giants defense. Yeah, he did. Played better. (laughs) Giants defense was on the field for 84 plays last last week. 
They were dead in the second half. Poor job by Pat Shermer there. Three and out, three and out, three and out in the second half. Basically gave the game back over to the to the Eagles. I just think the Redskins keep it close, keep it within a field goal here. Pete, you back it or not? No, I like the I like the Eagles, but I do yeah. like the under. If we all like the under, we could throw that into the parlay. Uh, sure. Um, you like it, right? Yeah. Yeah, you like it, Princess. Okay, we'll just okay. Uh, are we begging you? Are we begging you to put that in? I mean, don't don't make us let's, force you to. Yeah, that's definitely a loser. Just we're all like hesitantly putting it in. Let's yeah, let's see what you think about this next game. Then we'll decide. So Monday night, Colts at Saints. Saints are an eight point favorite on the Westgate line. I think it's like nine out there in the market. Not surprising. Um, T.Y. Hilton is a maybe, still t- to, do, to be determined. Over under, though, 46. That's a low over under for a Saints team that just lost a bunch of defensive players, RJ. Yeah, Saints just lit up a great D at home, too. They should be able to score against Indy. Indy has been a solid D, but they're not, you know, they're not the 49ers. Uh, Brissett finally looked healthy against the Bucks. Colts' offense is uh, already strong on third downs over the season. Third down percentage are ninth in the league. Red zone percentage are seventh in the league. And now Brissett's getting healthy, so I do like the upside of that offense. Even if T.Y. Hilton's not back, and, and I'm not ready to rule him out yet, it seems like he is getting a little work in in practice. The Indy rushing attack should give Norland some trouble as well. Each of these defenses just gave up 500-plus yards of offense to their opponents in their last games. So why is the total not higher than 46 in New Orleans? It just doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, I, this game should get to the 50s at least, so give me no, give me the over. That's the best bet. Uh, I do think the Saints will cover the number. Uh, I do also think it's going over. I didn't make it as one of my best bets. I see you both did, so I'll be rooting against you, but no, <laughs> no I'm uh, I oh, think it's I think it's going over. Light. No, I think it's going over. I do think it's going over. Again, no Rankins, no Davenport. That defense was terrible last week. They made Jimmy Garoppolo look like Joe Montana. Brissett's been struggling a little bit. He hasn't been as consistent as he was before the injury, but I think this one's going over. I agree with you. I'll, I'll put that in the best bets. I prefer I mean, in that, the, um, parlay. I prefer that one to the under or the other one. I prefer yeah. this one to the Eagles under. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's do that. So, that so, would we'll be th- so we'd have three now then. Right. Yeah, so we'll have uh, Saints over on Monday night, Raiders over. And the Chargers. Correct. Kind of like that. Kind of like that. Winner. A two-day parlay. Now, look, if, you, if, you, if you're trying to get paid out on Sunday, try to avoid paying out. Don't don't put the Monday game in there. You know what I'm saying? I like can't. it. Yeah. I like it. All right. Uh, Pete, let's, uh, let's get your best bets here. All right. I got the... Uh... Dolphins and uh, Giants over 46 and a half. Oakland minus six and a half. Oakland over, and Jacksonville over 45 and a half. Bills plus two and a half. Falcons plus 10 and a half. Uh, Chargers plus two and a half because I think they win the game outright. And the Rams. So that uh, gives me seven. You know what that means, don't you? Two and five. <laughs> there it is. Two and five. There it is. Nothing I love more than Pete. <laughs> there it is. There it is. <laughs> uh, seven and I- oh, baby. Pete's got to go do the sports line show. I'm not losing a game the rest of the regular season. I'm undefeated the rest. Can I bet against that? Yes, you can. Yeah, I'd like. You got to give me a million to one. I'll give a dollar, a million to one. You in? No. No. One time. The odds are probably even worse than that. Yeah. One one time we were. I'm not paying a million dollars. What if you were on a two week hot undefeated streak? I'd be melting down. (laughs) He would be. I wouldn't let you bail out either. Cancel. Cancel the podcast. Not even let him on. he would drag every cent out of you too. Like, hey, Brinson, if if we went to the final weekend and I had been like fourteen and zero, and all I had to do, and I'd only have to pick like four games the last week of the season, I might pick one game the last week of the season to go fifteen and zero. Would you beg me to bail out? Like, would you say, hey, look, I'll take the ten, I'll give you ten grand to bail out to try and buy it back? Uh, what, no. what do you think the price would be to get let you out? What do you think it would be? I mean, to let me out of a million. Well, first of all, like you know what I would do in that scenario, I would put the one game in in the last week, and then whatever you needed it to happen, I'd bet all half a million dollars on the other side. You have half a million dollars in cash to bet. Oh uh, yeah, I go get it. <laughs> I know some guys on the. I know some guys on the street. Come on. I don't, but, then unfortunately, what happens is I welch on my million dollars to you, and you owe somebody five hundred grand, or you lose and you owe five hundred grand on the street. Yeah, shy life. I don't know if your hedge to sh- is going to work out necessarily well for you. Because <laughs> no. I'm probably just not going to pay you a million dollars. Oh, um, you would pay me okay. Because I'd send I Rocco would... and Guido to see you. Oh, my God. You, <laughs> no, threaten- you can't even get 50 bucks from Costos. How are you getting a million dollars? Yeah, what about him? He's avoiding me. Well, true. By the way, what this reminds me, one time in college, we were playing golf. And uh, we had a, my roommate at the time, Wes, uh, 
pretty pretty good golfer, but not like you know incredible or anything like that. And he was uh he's out there. We're out at Eagle Ridge, and he was playing like crap. And on like the I think it was like the 11th hole, he goes, "That's it. From now here on out, I am I'm shooting under par the rest of the way in." He's like, "I'll take any any bet you want." We're like, "What is your max bet? We will take." Whatever your max bet is, I and mean, he's like uh, fifty bucks each. Immediately double bogeys the first hole. We're like, oh, let's see, we'll see you, Wes. Pay up, pal. Uh, that was the easiest money ever. When somebody's going uh, bad and they snap like that, I've yeah, seen people like, snap on the golf course. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, look at that, Pete. Time for you to go. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, Pete's got to go do sports sign again. You can. Watch Sports Line on CBS Sports HQ, 6 to 7 p.m. every single night. Great gambling advice on there. Best picks you'll see on the planet. I'm on there a bunch. And you can go to sportsline.com slash join. Use promo code white and get your first month for a dollar. Get all of RJ's picks plus plenty of other experts. Pete, we'll see you next week, buddy. Got it, guys. All right, RJ. Pete has left the building. Our tiny tan Elvis has departed us. And said, now we must talk about the Ravens, excuse me, the Patriots and the Bengals game that I'm sure has no you know, storylines outside of you know, just the football being played on the field. Right. Pretty basic. Just kidding. Spygate two is important. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't think you can possibly take the Patriots to cover here. They didn't get their first quarter coaching signals tape. So uh, it got confiscated. <laughs> so. There's no way that the Patriots can win this game. And, uh, um, you know, I would avoid the spread. I think the value is obviously going to be on the Bengals with this high of, of a point total, but I can't play them. Uh, roll with the under. You know, go with Patriot unders more often than not because their defense is, is killer, and I think they'll come out and, and roll. Uh, nine and, the under is 9-4 in both Patriots and Bengals games this year. So combine the two, you're talking about 18-8 and eight trend for the year. Pat's offense doesn't look good. Less than 300 yards in three of the last four games. Uh, Bengals defense playing well the last few weeks. Pats don't have a run game to exploit the, the Bengals weakness. Cause you, in this type of Bengals game, you would expect the team's going to run up and down the field, but the Patriots run game hasn't really looked great. Um, Bengals offense shouldn't get anything on that Pats D. So uh, the under for our total was 40 and a half. It's gone up to 41 and a half in the market because I guess somebody thinks that the, the Patriots are going to go off a little bit offensively, but 41 is a key number for, for totals. So if you can get 41 and a half, go ahead and take the under there. Uh, Bill Belichick, very good on the road as a double-digit favorite. The Patriots are ticked off that the Bengals accused him of being cheaters and liars. I understand it's a 40-and-a-half point total. I don't disagree on the under. I don't think there'll be a whole lot of points scored here. I think the Patriots will score early, and then the Bengals will be forced to throw, and they won't be able to because the Pat secondary is very good. Alden Tate on injured reserve. Um, AJ Green will probably be ruled out mysteriously at, at 11:30 on Sunday. If he if he had already ruled out, who knows? Um, they just don't seem interested in playing him. I will take the Patriots as the best bet here. Uh, I'm probably taking the bait at nine and a half. Uh, I don't care. The Pats dominate as a heavy road favorite in this spot, and they will be angry and angry Bill Belichick and angry Tom Brady, knowing that this game is somehow must win because if they don't, and the Bills win on Sunday, the Bills will be coming to town to steal the AFC East. So I think the Patriots will find a run game in this situation. They will run effectively, and they will cover the spread against the Bengals. Although, look, to be perfectly frank, I've been complaining to you guys for like 30 minutes. When you and Pete were, I was like, that line looks fishy. This line looks fishy. This line also looks fishy because it should be 10 or 10 and a half, right, if you're, if you're back in the Bengals. Yeah, but they are the road favorite, so it's just hard to give you a double-digit road favorite in, in, any, in any sense. But uh, if you need a run game, why not put Brady back there at running back? You saw that 17-yard scamper he had? <laughs> like, that guy can move. Uh, Bears at Packers. Packers minus four over under 40 and a half. You got the Packers in this spot, huh? Best bet Packers. Uh, it's four for the contest. Um, I think four and a halves and fives are probably in the market right now. Line open at seven and I can understand taking the bears at seven, but at four there's value on the Packers with their home field in December. You have to give them at least, I think four points for home field in that sense, you know, maybe three and a half, maybe four, but green Bay is 21 and five at home straight up in a de in December and January since 2009, three of those five losses came when Rogers didn't play for 60 minutes. So if Rogers is out there on the field, 60 minutes, and we presume he's going to be for this game, got to love their chances to get the win. Chicago is still an underwhelming team failed to cover in seven of their eight before beating the Cowboys. I'm not going to hang that much on them because we were killing the Cowboys for how, how bad their coaching is and how disinterested they, they are and how much they struggle against teams they should beat. So I don't know that we need to upgrade Chicago too much for that win. Uh, every Green Bay against the spread losses here has been followed with an against the spread win and the Packers coming off and not covering. believe they're going to cover here. Um, this time of the year, I'd give, like I said, Green Bay four points for home field. They're still better than Chicago if you put them on a neutral. 
neutral, so we're getting value on the four. That's why Packers are a best bet for me. Okay. Um, I lean to the Bears here just because I think it's going to be a defensive battle, and I'm just not sure the Packers have done enough offensively for me. Trubisky's been pretty good the last three games. I don't think he's back, um, but I'm just not sure that this Aaron Rodgers season feels like feels kind of fraudulent. Is he going to get to 4,000 passing yards? Probably, maybe, maybe not. Maybe he's at like 3,800. I mean, the interceptions are fantastic. The touchdowns look pretty good. I mean, he could end up getting to 30. If he blows up in this game and the Packers cover easily, then he's going to get to 4,030 and, and under five, and we'll look back on it as a great season. I just don't think he's having that great of a year. Uh, I'll lean towards the Bears here because it's more than three. But, I mean, I understand. I mean, look. Aaron Rodgers could come out and have one of those games at home. I just think getting Akeem Hicks back, the Bears have enough, and they're they're playing well over the last few weeks. And I don't think it's a mirage. Um, I need to look into this and find out if I'm am I am I am I reverse donking myself this week? Is that what's happening? Oh man, I am. It seems like there's a lot of snowballing to the Bears right now, and and I just think their value with this line move. You know, like I said, it opened at seven and it's moved down to four. People are hopping all over the Bears bandwagon at this point. It's not going to keep rolling. We've seen we have enough evidence of Trubisky to know that he's not the answer at quarterback. Mm, this line is, it's like reverse line movement, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm, boy. Getting the getting the bad right. value there, and yeah. I don't know that Aaron Rodgers. You know, we. He doesn't look great. His stats aren't as great. He's 23 touchdowns, two interceptions, so it's not like he's terrible either. But I wouldn't blame it all on him. I don't think that he's falling off as much as they just haven't put weapons around him. So when Devontae Adams gets hurt, there's like nobody. Like you can't – Jerron Allison didn't emerge as a, as a, as a uh, reliable weapon. Marcus Valdez scaling, like gives you a one good play every – few weeks or so Jimmy Graham's a shell of his former self so who does he have to throw to I mean you can only cook you know at, at if you're 26 27 year old Aaron Rodgers you can cook with whatever you got but once you get to this age you need a little bit of help around you with so I think in the offseason they need to get him some better better uh secondary weapons there to go along with Devontae Adams and I think he'll elevate his game to the, to what we're used to seeing mm. all right mm. Mm. I, I'm, yeah mm. I got I got the bears in my pain now you got me sweating this um, I got the Bears, so I'd maybe follow RJ on this one because I'm clearly I'm clearly I'm a little lost in the woods today. Tex, Texans at the Titans. I'm not lost on this game. Titans minus three. The over under is fifty. Um, I love the over in this game. I love it more than I love AJ Brown, which is more than I love multiple members of my family. This is going to be a shootout. This is going to be the game we thought that I thought. Dolphins Jets will be except these teams are efficient in the red zone both are top six in red zone efficiency on offense for the year and for the last three weeks so that it's, it's not like this was a fluke early on in the season these teams are converting in the red zone and they're allowing scores I think you're going to see Ryan Tannehill have to air it out a little bit more to keep pace with Deshaun Watson the, the Texans secondary I mean the both secondaries are banged up Gary on Conley hurt uh, Dory Jackson hurt uh, Malcolm Butler on IR uh, I think uh, the whole whole host of people. It's a huge game for division supremacy. I sort of lean towards the Texans uh, mainly because I think, again, I'm not like not like public sentiment should matter that much in, in 2019. Um, but I, I I do think that you know everyone is going to be on. Is everyone on the Titans? Am I am I missing something? Am I, am I missing the public angle here? Shouldn't everyone be on the Titans in this spot? Well, the tickets are 50-50, so everyone obviously isn't on the Titans at this point. Um, mm-hmm. And if you were going to play that angle of everybody's hopping on a Tennessee team that has played so well, why is the line only three? Because this Titans team, the way it's playing, should be favored by more. Best bet for me is the Titans. Weighted DVOA, which is a football outsider statistic, and then they weighed it based on the, the more recent games having more weight than earlier in the season. says so there's a huge gap between these teams, 22.7 percentage points. To give that context, in, in a regular season, that gives you about the gap between an average team, you know, like your Colts type of team, and like some of the, you know, four or five worst teams in the league, maybe like a, a Bengals kind of thing. So this is a huge gap in, as far as their weighted DVOA away uh, and so why is this line only three I don't know Tennessee offense has scored 30 points in four straight including against solid defenses like Kansas City and Indianapolis they're five one and one against the spread with Ryan Tannehill you said Deshaun Watson you know Tannehill's gonna have to keep up with Deshaun Watson and air it out a little bit Watson's gonna have to keep up with Tannehill there's not that many quarterbacks that are playing better than Ryan Tannehill right now and that Houston defense has fallen apart you just go through any statistic you want they're 27th in DVOA 28th in points per drive then you look at situationally they're 31st in the red zone 32nd on third downs Tennessee can 
can keep I don't care about Derrick Henry's health. Ryan Tannehill can keep the offense moving, picking up first downs, getting touchdowns. But Tennessee's D is shaky, so I wouldn't mind the over as well. Um, but best bet for me is tennis is Tennessee minus three. Okay. I mean, I, I I took the over at 48. I said it on our YouTube uh, exclusive. That's what I liked, and I'm 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 obviously sticking by it. I think I think that I think the over is a fantastic bet. Um, I, I again, I'm going to lean towards the Texans. I I might maybe I'll. And I'm not bailing out. I can't bail out. Now I'm making the freaking picks now. I'm taking the Texans. Every I think everybody's gonna be on the Titans. Everybody's seen what they've done. And you see last week where the 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 Texans lost to the Broncos. I just think it's gonna be a very close game. And Tennessee has had some lucky breaks in recent weeks, just in terms of they could have lost to the Colts and and you know been down twenty to or been down twenty to seventeen, get a block field goal to the house. They blow out the Colts. I don't you know, I just I just think there's a little bit of luck factor there. And uh, Deshaun Watson in a big spot I don't like to bet against. Seahawks minus six and a half at the Panthers, over under 48. I will take the Seahawks as a best bet. This Panthers team, like the Jaguars team we talked about, they've checked out. They're done. You could see it against the Falcons. They had nothing there. And their worst, like the thing they're worst at, which is stopping the run, is the thing that the Seahawks want to do the most and are pretty good at. And they are going to run the football a ton here. I think uh, Rashad Penny's out for the season, obviously. Chris Carson could have 150 rushing yards. And Russell Wilson, the last time he threw, uh, had four straight games of an interception, he came back and threw for 350 passing yards and four passing touchdowns. In a Week 15 game, no less. He has not been good the last few weeks. People are starting to really push him down to MVP ballots. Ryan Tannehill, better than Russell Wilson? I didn't say it, but people are saying it. And so... Uh, I'm going to take the Seahawks as a best bet to blow out the Panthers on the East Coast. We've talked on this podcast a bunch. 9-3-1, and one, uh, Russell Wilson and Pete Carroll since 2015 at 1 o'clock start games. Russell Wilson 3-1 and one outright in Carolina in his career. Nobody is saying that Tannehill is a more deserving MVP than Russell Wilson. You're making stuff up. Uh, I'm not worried about the early start time. Seattle's nine and two against the spread in the last 11, 1 p.m. Eastern games, almost 10 and one. Uh, that Atlanta game, depending on where you got it, at close seven and a half, and they only won by seven. And I, be- I think we probably took it at six and a half in the, on the uh, pod. Um, but Seahawks minus six and a half, it's a lot of points. Uh, if I had to lean on one side of the spread, I'd probably lay the points too and go with you on the Seahawks. My better lean is probably to the over. Um, Seattle's D's third in total number percentage. There's can't, Carolina's offense is seven worth. It's going to be a long day for Kyle Allen, but those short fields are going to help. The Seahawks pick up some touchdowns that maybe they shouldn't have. Carolina's D ranks 32nd against the run per DVOA and yards per carry, so Seattle can extend the lead in the second half as opposed to just running up the middle and punting. Um, so I think that will help you keep that, uh, that cover alive um, but I do think there is that potential for the Panthers backdoor because the Seahawks secondary has been a little shaky at times so um, if there are points a lot of points scored in the second half as they're looking to rally back the over is probably going to hit so I would lean to the over but I don't love anything in this game really Okay. Um, Broncos at Chiefs Chiefs minus 9 over under 46 my best bet here is the under. When you look at Andy Reid as a double-digit favorite in December in Kansas City. It's happened five times. The under is 4-1. and one. I think it's a little bit of a fluke. that pe- People see the Broncos, all the points they scored against Houston. They're not going to go in there and do it against Kansas City because you know what? Kansas City's got a good defense now and a good pass defense. And Drew Locke, they're going to have to play a little more ball control. Can't wing it all over the place uh, against Kansas City. They are playing well. People are underestimating what they're doing on defense. Um, and I think, look at that hairstyle. I could hang out with Drew Locke. I think we could be buddies. Um, probably thinks I'm a doofus, though. An old, an old, uh, maybe might say okay boomer to me. Um, Chiefs not playing great offensively either. I mean, they, they look pretty good against the Patriots, but Patrick Mahomes is hurt, and so I just don't think he's going to be able to throw it around a ton. I wouldn't want to lay the nine here because there's backdoor potential. Uh, we saw you know the Chiefs were willing to let the Raiders score late, uh, but I will take the under at 46, and I think it'll close at like 44, honestly. And you're doing that because of Andy Reid's record in double-digit games in December, correct? Well, I just think it's a good – I think it's a matchup between two teams that people – tend to look at as um, offensive in recent weeks, and really they're more defensive, in my opinion. Is nine or nine and a half a, a double-digit number? Uh, no, but it was ten. 
It is nine, ten now. nine and a half in a lot of places. I think it'll probably close at nine and a half. I think people want to take the Broncos here. Broncos have looked good. I would lean to the Broncos as well. I'm not going to make it a best bet. Denver seven and two against the spread over the last nine, seven and three all year when they're the underdog. Um, obviously, you have a lot of quarterback changes there, so so I don't know that you can count all those games equally. But Locke looks like the best out of their three quarterbacks, so maybe they're better now. Uh, he looked great last week. I think this week it's going to be about exploiting Kansas City's rush defense. They're thirtieth in yards per carry. Philip Lindsay's been running the ball well. They're going to want to give him a lot of work there and and, uh, and shorten the game down and so there's not going to be as many possessions. Despite that game being a blowout, uh, Kansas City office didn't look great against Denver in the uh, second half of their first uh, their first matchup more did play in the second half too so you got to take those stats with a grain of salt um, Denver's quality D their first in red zone percentage their 11th in DVOA it helps them not get blown out very often they play a lot of close games they're not going to get you know housed by double digits very often so with Mahomes dealing with a hand injury I doubt Kansas City throws it a bunch either even if they have running back issues with injuries as well I think that Kansas City's more likely going to be in the 20s than the 30s in this game and if you agree with that I think you got to like the Broncos to cover the number even if they're not going to win even if Kansas City's the better team it seems more like a six or seven point divisional win than it does a, a double digit blowout so you mean a low scoring game then? lower scoring game but not because of Andy Reid's record in double digit spread games because I think it's not going to close in double digits all right whatever Browns minus two and a half at the Cardinals the over is 48 nobody wants to back the Browns the Browns are doo-doo but you know what Baker Mayfield is a vengeful spiteful chip on his shoulder jerk face and he's getting david and joku back this week we're back at full strength this week he played last week but didn't really only you know, have a couple targets 20 baker, snaps, i think how many 20 i think it was 20 snaps yeah there you go david and joku back at full strength for no worse at defending tight ends in the cardinals and baker mayfield once was basically benched and told to take a hike by his old coach at texas tech who now happens to be coaching the Arizona Cardinals. And if there's one thing we know about Baker, if he's playing a bad pass defense coached by a team that is features someone who spited him previously, AKA Hugh Jackson, the Bengals last year, he will light them up. And I think Baker Mayfield, even with his bad hand is going to go into Arizona, no bad conditions here. He is going to put up some digits on the, uh, on the Arizona Cardinals passing defense. I don't know what Pat P is going to do. Maybe he shadows Odell Beckham. Maybe shadows Jarvis Landry. That's why I think it's going to go to Njoku because the Cardinals are vulnerable to tight ends in that position. I think Baker has a big game against his buddy, Kyler Murray, who once uh, sat behind him at Oklahoma. If Baker Makefield could could uh, choose when he plays well in these like you know these these uh, revenge game spots then I have a lot of questions about his season because he has not played well this season uh, I don't trust Cleveland to go on the road and get a win right now so I can't take them I don't love the Cardinals either my, that would be my lean but you know I don't love them uh, I think you can throw on Arizona but you've had less than 200 pass yards in three of their last four if you're you're Cleveland so the, something about that pass game is not working right now um, yeah Cleveland D got gashed by Cincy last week. They were able to hold them to field goals. So that game did not get out of hand. They could have easily lost that game, but uh, since he had to keep kicking a lot of field goals, Arizona's offense has been awful, but you know, Rams and Steelers, you're going to have a lot of teams looking awful in that two game stretch. Um, they're way better than the Cleveland defense at, at the very least. I think it's a very back and forth game. I think it goes over. That would be my lean. If I was going to take one of these sides, I don't love it. Um, Cause I think either of these teams can melt down offensively at any time and just everything goes wrong with these coaches. So I think Arizona, Eeks out a win in the end, but it's a back and forth game where uh, you get over the total. And look, I should point out that I would consider, I, I don't think it's going to be like a bloodbath because Cleveland's defense is not very good. And Kyler Murray can, if they're playing a questionable defense, can put up points. Um, but I, I do think Baker has a big game and they win by more than two and a half. I wouldn't mind throwing the Cardinals in a money line parlay because it's a home game against a bad team. You know what I mean? Like that's not a bad spot to be in. Uh, Bucks minus three at the Lions. Speaking about a home game, game of the week. Dog. What's that? Love it. Game of the week. It could be I, Ryan Griffin versus David Blau. Blau! <laughs> yeah, it's a scorcher. Over under 47. Feels a little high. These defenses are bad. Mike Evans is out. Is this the O.J. Howard breakout game, R.J.? Bucks minus three at Detroit over under 47. He's looked a little better recently, so I, you know, I wouldn't mind it with Evans out. Um, you beat the Bucks by throwing on him. I'm not sure Blau can do that. Marvin Jones is now on the injured reserve as well, so I don't know how. And I think uh, 
as of Thursday, they ruled Bo Scarborough out too. So that run game isn't going to be that effective either. So uh, I don't love the Lions here. If my lean is going to be the Bucks, but I don't think people can get three. We have it for three in the contest. I think the market is three and a half as of now. And I expect that to go up if Winston is ruled in like I expect him to be. Um, Bucks D is good situationally. Fourth and third down percentage. 14th and red zone percentage. They're clearly trying hard for Arians. He's going to be back next year. There's no reason to think that he's on the hot seat. So these players don't have a reason to check out because they're playing for their spots next year. Um, but I can't trust Jameis enough as a road favorite with that bum hand enough to make it a best bet, but that would be my lean, even though that seems super obvious, super public. Uh, I, I would have to go with the Bucks here. Yeah, uh, I'm going to take the Lions. No, I don't like it. Don't love it. David Blau, Kenny Galladay going to hook up a little bit. Maybe David Blau is the million maker winner this week against a bad Bucks pass defense. Who knows? Probably not. Could be. Um, Throw him in with Amendola. Amendola, you'll be able to get cheap, and they're going to be throwing to secondary targets with Hawkinson out and Marvin Jones out. I mean, throw it to the him, and uh, you're dumping off to Ty Johnson and or McKissick, and who knows? I just don't think that the Buccaneers know how to blow anybody out. So I don't think they're going to blow out the Lions. I think they'll like maybe if you can get it three, you want three and a half, I think, or four and a half, depending on but. Depends on what happens with Jameis, and we don't know what happens with Jameis. I mean, look, they they were down. They should have lost that game to the Colts badly. There's no reason they should have won that game. Some weird stuff had to happen, some Coltsy stuff and some Bucksy stuff, and it eventually did happen. I, I agree. They, the Arians is not on the hot seat. They'll, they are playing hard for him. Uh, it's an impressive little December push by Jameis Winston, like he always does, seemingly. Um, and I would, uh, but I'm going to take the Lions plus the points at home. Here are our best bets. Prisco has. The Giants, Dolphins over. Raiders minus six and a half. Raiders, Jags over 45 and a half. Bills plus two and a half. Falcons minus 10 and a half. Chargers plus two and a half. And the Rams minus one. RJ, you have. Pete has Falcons plus 10 and a half, not minus. Uh, I got. I got Washington plus four and a half at home against Philly, a team that is overrated and somehow uh, Green Bay minus four at home against Chicago. The line should be higher in Green Bay, Tennessee minus three versus Houston. They're the much better team of these two at this point, Miami plus three and a half at the Giants. How are the Giants favored Oakland minus a million? If you have to lay a million against Jacksonville, Jacksonville's quit. Oakland's playing their last home game, but I got it. Oakland minus six and a half chargers plus two and a half against Minnesota. I think that's an underrated chargers team at this point. And then Colts saints over, 46 on Monday night going to be a high scoring game I'm with you on the Colts Saints game over that's one of mine as well I also love the Houston Tennessee over Kansas City Denver under 46 Indianapolis as I mentioned they're over 46 Washington plus four and a half Patriots minus nine and a half at the Bengals Seattle minus six and a half at the guy got a lot of big road chalk what could go wrong Seattle minus six and a half at the Panthers Cleveland minus two and a half at Arizona and we also have our parlay reminder. This thing is only hit once per year, but it's due again. Chargers plus two and a half Raiders Jags over 45 and a half and Colts Saints over 46. You can go to CBS and read RJ will have a whole breakdown of all our best picks for each game. I'll have my best bets posted along with the money line parlay um, and some other stuff on CBS sports. RJ, always a pleasure, buddy. And we'll uh, be back next week.